Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the concept of port forwarding for your Mac OS server. Now, port forwarding uh, allows you to access your services remotely. Uh, it's a setup that uh, enables you to get access to the outside world through the ports in your router onto your server. And so I'm going to talk about how to set that up. But let's talk about what port forwarding is a little more in detail. So I'm going to pull up the airport utility here because this is a nice diagram of my network. And I talked about this a little bit in the previous screencast when we talked about network configuration. But I want to speak to this specifically about port forwarding. So here we are. This is the internet out here. This is my modem. goes through my modem to the internet. I've got my airport extreme base station uh, hardwired to that modem right there. That's what the solid line is. And then this is a dotted line wirelessly to uh, another airport extreme that's just extending my network. Now, important to understand a few concepts about port forwarding. This router right here functions as a hard uh, hardware firewall. And what that means is that no traffic can come in and out of this router except for ports that are open that allow specific traffic to get through. And ports are just like doors into your network. And so with nothing open, the networks can stay closed. Uh, with a few ports open, then the network is open and allows traffic in. And so what port forwarding is, is it's basically opening the right doors for the right traffic for specific services. So each service has an address, and those addresses then are opened up so that you can get access to those services. For instance, uh, web servers or website stuff is usually on port 80. So port 80 is the address of that. And so if I open port 80, then I have access to those uh, internet protocols okay, that go back and forth. And that's kind of how port forwarding works. Now built into your router is the ability to open and close these ports. And, uh, and that's one of the things that a router is good for because it's built with a, with a, hard wall, a hardware firewall. Now, in order to uh, open those ports, you have to go into the configurations of the router in order to make that happen. So I'm going to show you how this works with an Airport Extreme just to give you an idea. Uh, but the beauty of using the server application is the server application itself, itself with an Airport Extreme can open those ports for you. So let's go ahead and go into the airport. OK, here we are inside the Airport Extreme. And so I'm in my con uh, configuration screen here. And what we're going to do is just go over to Network here for a minute and take a look at what this port forwarding stuff looks like on the router itself. Now, uh, if you look right here, again, remember we have DHCP and NAT set up. Again, NAT is Network Address Translation. And that is the port settings down here. That's what that stands for. And you'll see down in this little area here, I've got ports that are open for different services. And so, for instance, if I just uh, pull up a service like uh, Plex, for instance, let's go ahead and just double click on that. If I double click, or if I just hit edit on here, I get this drop down. And what this does is it shows me the different ports that it has open uh, for the different services. And you notice that the ports are divided into public, uh, private, and then private down here. Okay, so we've got public and private. Uh, these are the ones for the outside, these are the ones for the inside. Okay, and you notice in this case the same port is open uh, for both uh, public and private. Now we have an option in here to put a description. If I just hit this drop down, you can see that it comes preloaded with some descriptions ahead of time, like personal file sharing, Windows file sharing, those sorts of things. And it already has those ports programmed in so that if you want to open those, you can just select them and it'll fill in the appropriate ports for you. Uh, you'll notice down here, though, I've got what's called a UDP and TCP port. And let me just describe what those are. Uh, TCP is Transmission Control Protocol. And so what happens is, is this allows multiple packets to come in. So it divides it up into multiple packets. And they are guaranteed uh, to arrive. Okay, So they're guaranteed to get to their destination with TCP. UDP, okay, is user datagram protocols. And so it's, it sends one big packet through, but it doesn't have any guarantee that it's getting all the way through. So both of those are different protocols. And so in most cases, we'll sometimes do both. In the case of this one, I only needed to open TCP ports. So that's what I did here is open these two TCP ports. And so I've got the same one for public as I do for private. And it goes through my private IP address, which in this case is my server. And so that's how that works. And that's how you set those up. Let me just cancel this. And so you do the same thing with a brand new one. If I wanted to add a new one in here, I'd hit the plus, and I can set up whether it is for IP version 4 or IP version 6. 
Um, in this case, we're just going to use four. Again, my description, I can select any one of them. And so let's, for instance, select SSH, and you see that it automatically loads in the actual ports that I need, and I could change this and then save it, and then I would have a remote login or SSH login set up. Uh, so that's how that works. I'm just going to cancel that because I don't want to set that up. So that's what port forwarding looks like on the router, and that's how you get things in, in and outside your network. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to put this down right now because I'm not going to do that. And let's go back into our server app here. And let me show you how this works through the server application itself. And this is the benefit of having uh, Apple hardware with your server. So if I come over here to my server, you'll notice that it's got the name of my server, just like uh, my, of my router, uh, just like I have it set. And I'm going to enter the password here for my airport. And once I have that in there, I'm just going to click on Manage. And so it's going to go ahead and add that in there so that I can manage my airport. And there you go. You can see that I've got my um, airport all set and ready to go so I can start to manage it. So let me just show you what's on this screen. And again, if you don't have an Apple product, you will not see this in your sidebar. Uh, you'll just have to open the ports manually. And um, I'll give you the ports as we do the different services, but just wanted to let you know the difference there. So a couple of things. First of all, we've got a setting right here where it says require username and password login over Wi-Fi. And this is Apple's RADIUS setup, uh, which basically instead of just a password for, or for an SSID for your network to get into your wireless, it requires that you use an open directory username and password to get access to your network. What it does is that just uh, increases security. Uh, first off, because you've got different passwords for different users and instead of just one general password. And secondly, what it does, it just makes it easier to manage your network so that if you're doing this for a business and you have an employee who leaves, uh, instead of having to change the password for everybody, all you got to do is delete that person's entry from Open Directory and they no longer have access to your network. So it really is a, a very efficient way to manage uh, your network that way. And I may do a future screencast to show you how that works. Um, so that's that part of it. And then down here we've got our public services. And you can see I've got my um, you know, different services. There's my Plex one, just like I had on my router. And it just shows the information. Now I can actually delete uh, services here or I can add them. And so let me just hit the Add button. And what you'll notice is I get this drop down with all of these services that I have available to me. And these are the same services that I have over here in the sidebar. Uh, you can see, in fact, there's DNS, right? We had open DNS. Now, the only reason this didn't open automatically for me is I haven't, didn't have the airport set up before I opened the service. So let's go ahead and just open DNS here. I'm going to select that and just say Add. And what it does is it adds the service right there, and that has opened the port on my router without me having to restart the router. Uh, many times when you add a port, you have to restart it. In this case, I didn't, and now that port is added and everything's set and ready to go. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can even add ports without having to restart the router for other services. And so I can come in here and name the service and choose the port and add that, and it'll add it for me, again, without starting the router. And this is, again, a, just a great benefit of running uh, Apple hardware with your server is that it's all integrated and works really smooth. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that. Uh, anytime I want to close a port, again, I just hit the minus and it will delete it and that will close the port for me. And the beauty is anytime I start any of these services that require ports, from now on, it's going to automatically open those ports for me on the router. And you'll see when we start doing that, it's going to ask if I want to open those ports and I can just say yes. And it will do it for me without me having to do any configuration on my own. So that gives you an idea of how port forwarding works. Uh, again, like I said, if you've got a different router, you'll have to use the interface that came with your router to open these ports, um, which I'll give you along the way. But uh, as you can see, it's really simple to use with the included Apple hardware. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.